okay this is lecture number 18 okay and in this lecture we will do the industrial regions of india in the previous lecture lecture number 17 lecture number 17 we did the agro based industry mostly agro based industries right and in the uh, before the in the lecture number 16 we did the iron base and the aluminum industries plus we did discuss the weber theory so let us start with the today's class that is the industrial regions of india right so in industrial regions of india what is important to know is that what kind of the philosophy that india adopted while we started our industrialization post independence first of all that india adopted nehru mahalanobis model nehru Ma nehru mahalanobis model in this model india decided to adopt the industrial complex theory now under the industrial complex theory what we did the, we identified the basically two types of the one is the we identified the propulsive firm and leading industries we identified some something called as the leading industries and propulsive firms in the leading industries what we did is leading industries were like like iron steel industry right aluminium industry and on the basis of these industries the propulsive firm this task of propulsive firm was assigned to the public sector undertakings and on the basis of these leading industries and propulsive firm what we established we established the industrial complexes so india established industrial complexes and you will see these industrial complexes for example in bhilai in jamshedpur many parts of the eastern india right these industrial complexes were established and the main target was main target was to have the industrial growth to have to have the domestic industrial growth in india right and the second target was to develop the industrial uh, to develop the backward regions this was the second region mostly the eastern regions were the backward regions so this was the second target right and the third target was the industrialization of india the industrialization to achieve the industrialization of india right so this was the third target now the question is did we achieve this no Be because obviously we could not achieve all the targets that we are mentioning here whether it is the industrial growth the development of backward regions but some of the some of the objectives were established for example india achieved the sustainable development or the development in case of the heavy minerals whether it is the iron steel or whether it is the whether it is the aluminum industry we established well build complexes in the eastern region of india however when it comes to the back, uh, to you no know, mitigate the backwardness of the india particularly the eastern region we could not do and what happened actually now we try to establish the growth pole we try to establish the growth pole in the eastern india we thought that let us establish azam chhetpur power plant and it will reduce the poverty in that eastern region however the growth pole regions they become the islands of the prosperity in the islands of prosperity in the ocean of poverty so this was the main problem that uh, that i was right so what were the problems with these industrial complexes there were number of problems that were identified with these industrial complexes that they could not achieve their stated targets whether it is to remove the backwardness to achieve the industrialization or to achieve the higher economic growth etc so there were number of problems let us identify first of all those problems what were those problems mm -hmm. so the problems associated with the industrial complexes problems associated with industrial complexes the first major problem was the lack of diversification the very narrow set of the industries were established for example the consumer based industries were largely neglected automation industries were largely neglected so this was the major problem lack of lack of diversification the number two is the lack of infrastructure development lack of infrastructure development basically for any type of industrialization to happen and the to pace to get the fast pace for that you need to have the electricity proper electricity infrastructure proper rail road infrastructure bridges etc the all these uh, this kind of infrastructures were neglected in india the third major problem was the in inspector raj right for every for any type of industry to be established there were number of number of permissions which have to be taken 
and this all led to the creation of red tapeism and the delay because of the inspector raj okay so these were the main problem which did not allow the industrial complex theory or the nehru maralobis model based on the industrial complexes to succeed in india so after 90 what happened in because of this model india had to change its strategy in 1991 so in 1991 92 bop crisis after that we adopted the liberalization privatization and globalization reform and during these reforms we shifted gear from the industrial complex theory to more diversified nature industrial complex theory to a more diversified industrialization right and that industrialization we thought of in the form of scz special economic zones we thought that let us establish special economic zones and which will become the again the main centers for the development particularly the industrial growth but again this special economic zone theory was again a failure but let us before the special economic discussion of the scz let us discuss the how india shifted its gear okay what were the components of that change in gear number of first component um, the first was that the leading industries what were earlier leading industries leading industries earlier were very narrow set like iron steel aluminum etc but now we changed the gear of leading industries we included broader industry for example pharma was also in, included automation was also given priority right uh, the consumer based industries were also given priority consumer based industries were also given priority okay second was the uh, propulsive form the propulsive earlier the propulsive forms were basically public sector undertakings but now this concept of propulsive forms was also changed and the now target shifted from psu to the private forms so the private forms were also given equal emphasis and the equal motivation right and for that india adopted a number of measures whether it is the whether it is about the fast clearance whether it is about the fast clearance okay dismantling of the infra, dismantling of the inspector raj dismantling of inspector raj right larger fdi was promoted okay public se- private sector banks were also private sector banks were also established established and along with all these the capital norms were eased along with all these the capital norms were eased capital norms were eased in the form of whether it was reduction in slr whether it was a reduction in cash reserve so all these promoted the more flow of capital in the market so all these led to the change in the propulsive form as well as the leading industry but this all was again all these reforms were done by keeping this thing in center okay the thing that was in our mind that this kind this special economic zone kind of thing this will succeed but what were these special economic zones this special economic zones were established okay for giving the promotion to the industrialization now what government thought that let us establish a territory in our domestic territory in india that will be treated as the foreign territory for the perspective of foreign territory for the perspective of taxing okay so the taxation whether it was the whether it was the tax norm or whether it was the clearance norms whether it is the inspection inspection regime inspection regime the all things they were very relaxed okay these things were relaxed for example the industries which will or the firms which will establish in the scz they will given the 15 year tax holiday they will they will given the 15 year tax holiday 15 year tax holiday for clearance a single portal was established from where all type of clearance can be taken so from a single portal all type of clearance whether it is environmental clearance whether it is safety clearance work working condition clearance all type of clearance can be taken inspector regime was disbanded so all these were you know were the benefits for industry to get and established in this special economic zone okay but there again a problem arise in the success of the special economic zone so what problems arised in the success of the special economic zone so what problems arised the problems were mainly basically for example special economic zones in india are very small in size less than 3 hectare less than 3 hectare okay number number two problem is the misutilization of land allocated all the land was allocated but the many of the land remained unutilized so this was again a problem number number 3 problem was the 
IT sector industry for IT ITES industries they migrated to special economic jobs to take the tax benefit so there was no additional value addition in the form of the manufacturing industry being established in special economic jobs so this was completely absent number 4 was forward backward linkages were absent forward backward linkages were established backward linkages were absent now when we established when we thought of the sz policy we thought that when industry will establish the forward backward chains will be established or a complete proper supply chain will be established but that became completely absent because already well established industry are being migrated to this in just for the sake of you know benefiting from the tax relaxations so these were the main problems of sz policy so more or less these all problems we thought that we will you know change the pattern of in, uh, growth in india because we wanted the industrialization and the manufacturing to take the route in india but that did not happen so you can you can still see that only 15% of india's gdp comes from the manufacturing side and close to 55 to 60% gdp comes from the service sector so this huge disparity and this huge mismatch whether in terms of and if you see the employment the, this 15% gdp support close to 40% employment and this 55% support close to 15 to 17% employment so this huge disparity whether in terms of gdp and corresponding employment has resulted in the you no know, disguised employment large scale unemployment and the the you no know, growth which is not providing the employment in india so this needs to be corrected and for this we need to adopt a new industrialization policy so india at from starting need a new industrial policy resolution new industrial policy resolution to correct all these problems to correct all these problems right so we have discussed a brief what is the brief that how india started its industrialization process okay then how we changed the track in 91 but that change in track in change of track in 1991 again could not succeed because of our problems and many problems continue to persist even today but during the industrial complex policy india succeeded in establishing a number of industrial complexes which even today continue to propel the industrial industrial growth in india right so let us discuss those industrial regions of india which continue even today first region is the so first in is the hogli region kolkata hogli region again this region is the oldest region in india and this region extends from bansaberia bansaberia to bajbaj in south bajbaj so this is the length of this region and we will discuss the industrial regions in two things basically first we will discuss what are the pros or no what are the factors that led to the industrialization of this region so what are the factors and then we will discuss the current problems that are facing these industrial regions so the number of first factor that led to the development of the hogli region was the availability of port facility first was the port facility availability okay kolkata port was available here and from the kolkata port both eastern region as well as the western regions could be could be easily accessed so the number of uh, number of you no know, exports and imports continue to rise through this port right so port facilities were present number 2 was the early development of the kolkata uh, early development because of the because of the you no know, uh, the propulsion or the because of the capital invested by the britishers in this region and the well established administrative setup this industrial regions from the very beginning had the prospects of the growth so this again led to the the development of the hogli region as the industrial belt number third was the the easy accessibility to the resources easy accessibility to resources see this region hogli region is very close to the whether it is the singhum region iron ores whether it is the whether it whether it is a coal resources okay of the raniganj so this region has very easy accessibility to the resources okay number 4 is the the waterways and the transport waterways and transport again this region has very easy accessibility to the waterways and has dense network of the railways as well as roadways so this again work in the favor of this region right number 5 is the power availability power availability right again this region has continuous and good supply of the power because of the vicinity to the damodar valley corporation and the number of dams and the power plants were established under this project damodar valley corporation project right so this again favor work in this favor right number 6 is the extensive hinterland 
extensive hinterland see this region the kolkata and the west bengal hubli region is located very close to the very densely populated region of the india whether it is odisha bihar so very easy availability of the cheap labor which could be utilized either in the cotton industry jute industry or other associated industrial infrastructures petrochemical industry etc right so these were the six factors main factors which worked in the favor of the hubli region to develop right but it is not that this region is not facing problems uh, currently this region is facing number of problems that we will discuss right so the first problem so let us discuss the problems problems faced by this region number 1 is the after independence a large part after independence a large part of the jute growing area large jute growing area went to the bangladesh very large jute area so this again disfavored india for the better establishment of the jute industry number 2 is the pollution problem in this region pollution problem large number of the polluting industries which are very old so they have the very old instruments and the machineries which is which are very polluting in nature right and have become no obsolete so this was the problem number 2 problem number 3 is continuous or the silting problem silting problem of the kolkata port because of this silting problem the draft depth of the port decreases and this reduces the you no know, migration or the, this reduces the transportation by the ships okay through this port kolkata port this was the uh, third problem fourth problem is the industrial sickness actually this region in the west bengal is for large a portion of the time was governed by the left wing government because of this the labor unions have become very strong and the continuous protest and the lockdowns and the industrial strikes led to the industrial sickness in this belt right this this was the fourth region for the you know, that the, this region is facing problem number 5 is because of the division or the partition of india after the 1947 what happened that the sorry because of partition of india the north east region of india got disconnected from the mainland of india so there is very small chicken corridor which is called siligur corridor also through which the the industrial or the any material is transported from the mainland area to the north east or from or vice versa so this disconnect between the north east and the the west bengal particularly can only be accessed through the west Bang, uh, the bangladesh but the protocols are absent and the proper transportation linkages between both the countries is is you know largely absent so this is third pro uh, fifth problem which is facing this region currently right so this was the hugli region moving on to the next region that is the bombay pune region so let us discuss the bombay pune region right this region again we will discuss in the two respects so number one are the factors which led to the growth of the industrial uh, the industries in the uh, this region the mumbai pune region so the so, so number one factor was the historical factor again historical factor in the historical factors what we can say that this region has the black soil so the cotton textile industry because of the cotton growth and the cotton textile industry flourished in this region from the very beginning because of the black soil as well as the now the as well as the in, uh, the capital which was provided the second historical factor was the the propulsiveness which was provided by the britishers so britishers from very early time provided whether it is the capital whether it is the growth of transportation transportation in the form of the rail connectivity in 1853 which was first established here so this problem uh, sorry these factors led to the growth the another factor is the again again hinterland okay the availability of the cheap labor here again then uh, the other factor that is the because of the western ghats the number of power plants were established here for example the tarapur power station tarapur nuclear power plant okay the tata power plant tata power plant these were established here this provided the electricity easy availability of the electricity then another factor that led to the growth of the mumbai pune region is the port okay number of ports were developed whether it is on the jnpt kandla port etc so these again provided the good Uh, connectivity okay to the this region other factor is the local 
market of the capital whether it is the so local mahajans and the money lenders were active in this region from the very early time so they landed the capital on very easy rates whether it is the the bhatias um, for example parsis okay so they were present and they were the money lending class right uh, other reason as i said the population density was high next was the petroleum petroleum again was a big factor okay particularly after 1975 when the mumbai high drilling started mumbai high drilling started and the number of petrochemical industry started in this region which agglomerated with other industries like fertilizer industry naphtha industry etc so these were the main factors which led to the growth of industry in the mumbai pune belt but again number of problems have arisen in this belt also so the number so let us discuss the num, uh, the problems first uh, so which are the problems currently facing the mumbai pune region number one is the this region is facing the deindustrialization deindustrialization why deindustrialization because of the increasing rent in this increasing rent in because of mumbai as well as the delocalization other the industries are locating in the other regions where the labor is the cheap right this is the number one reason number two is the initial factors when the india got independent got independence in 1947 large part of the cotton growing region went out over to, to pakistan in the sindh so this led to the shortfall in this long staple growth in this region so because of independence and the uh, the partition right so this was the second problem facing this region and the next problem basically the as i said the crowding and the pollution problem and pollution problem okay this is the other reason facing this problem this region so these are the main problems currently facing the mumbai pune industrial region right moving on to the next region that is the ahmedabad vadodara region This region extends up to Gulf of Kambat, Surat from Ahmedabad, right? So Sabarmati region, Sabarmati Valley are also included in this Ahmedabad region, Ahmedabad Vadodara region. So what, let us in discuss the factors which led to the growth of this industrial region, that is the uh, Ahmedabad Vadodara region. Okay. Number one factor was the Gujarat capitalist, Gujarat capitalist community. So this community landed. the capital on easy rates right number 2 was the industry started moving from the uh, from mumbai side right so the migration of in, in in migration of industries in migration of industries from mumbai this was the another reason number 3 this is the black soil region again so again the long staple crop was grown here particularly the hyv seed you were utilized which led to the growth of the cotton textile industry in this region right so this was the third region which led to the industrialization of this region number 4 was the the petrochemical industry establishment petrochemical industries were established after the ankleshwar oil field ankleshwar oil field exploration started Okay, when this oil field exploration started, number of petrochemical industries were established. So this again led to the agglomeration and the local growth pool establishment in the Ahmedabad or other region. Number five is the port availability. Port availability. So this increased the accessibility and the connectivity of the Ahmedabad or other region more than any other region. So, for example, Kandla port. For example, Kandla port. Okay, and number of other ports, right? So this is the. These are the main factors which led to the growth. of the indus and the ahmedabad vadodara region now again this region or this region is facing some problems what are these problems the problem number uh, problems so problem is number one is the lockdowns and the labor strikes labor strikes because this region again has the history for example you remember the ahmedabad mill strike okay which was led by the mahatma gandhi and other problem is the the import of the cotton import of cotton however 
this region of the Ahmedabad Udodara region faces the minimum problem as compared to the other region. The simple reason is more concentration of the government in this region and more capital infusion of the government. And everyone knows the reason for that. Right. So this was the Ahmedabad Udodara region. Moving on to the next region, that is the fourth one. And the fourth region is the uh, Coimbatore Bangalore Belt. Coimbatore Bangalore Belt. So again, let us discuss what are the factors that led to the development of this belt. So factors that led to the development of this region. Number one is the accessibility. Accessibility means the accessibility to the ports, rail and road. For example, this region has the link to Bangalore port, Chennai port, Indore port, Mangalore port, Mumbai port. So accessibility is very high, right? Number two is the climate. Okay, climate is moderate even in the summers as well as winters. So this favored the establishment of many high skilled industry, for example, IT industry in this belt. Number three, uh, the reason is the, ex the availability of minerals. So mineral availability. This region has rich minerals, whether it is the Baba Budan hills, which are the iron ores, whether it is the Severo hills and the the Nai Valley, which, which is the which is the presence of the coal and the bauxite throughout this region. So this region has well accessibility of the minerals. Number four, which led to the uh, development of this region is the hydro power stations, hydro power plants, power stations. So number of hydro power stations, whether it is a Metro Dam, whether it is Stanley Reservoir, whether it is the Papanasam Reservoir. So there is the large number of hydro power projects established on this, uh, this region, uh, this region, right? So number five, which led to the development of this region is the research institutions, research institutions if you see large number of research institutions were established in bangalore mangalore hyderabad chennai so this led to again the into the entrepreneurial uh, entrepreneurial spirit in the this this belt right uh, so this these were the main factors which led to the growth of the coimbatore bangalore belt again a well developed region right moving on to the fifth industrial region of india that is the chota nagpur industrial region <laughs> Chota Nagpur Industrial Region. See the factors which led to the development of the Chota Nagpur region are very simple. The first factor that everyone knows is the mineral access, mineral availability. So large number of minerals, whether it is iron, coal, bauxite, and manganese, other minerals, all type of minerals are present in the, the Chota Nagpur region. So this is the big factor. Number two is the initial initial push provided by the government after independence in the form of industry policy resolution became the big region for establishment of growth goals in the Chota Nagpur region in the form of the local industry public sector undertaking whether it is the the sale or either it is the steel authority of india limited right number three that led to the development of this region is the the labor availability this region is has high population density and because of this the labor availability and accessibility is very high right so this is the another reason. Number four is the power projects. Number of power projects were established under the Damodar Valley Corporation project, which led to easy accessibility of the you no know, water as well as the power in this uh, this region. So again, these were the main factors which led to the growth of the Chota Nagpur industrial belt, right? So what we have discussed till now, we have discussed the five industrial regions of the India and some of the problems associated with the, for example, Mumbai, Bangalore, ke kya problem, Chen, uh, uh, the Kolkata, Hooghly region, ke kya problem, Ahmedabad, Odadara region, ke kya problem. But let us once again discuss the collectively what are the problems associated with the industrialization or more particularly the developing countries. Ke developing countries, ke saath development mein, particularly the industrial development, what are problems associated hai, right? Because if you know the problems associated with the development, uh, the industries or the industrial growth of the developing countries, only then we can you know, formulate a well in industrialized policy or the new industrial resolution okay so let us discuss the first of all those problems so problem associated with the industrialization of the developing world that we will see developing world problem number one is the problem of demand 
see although we generally say that the developing world has enough population so they can sustain the, the demand for the industrialized product but that demand will not give them anything so they need definitely they need the demand from the outside and when you see in the western world they have established a well linkage supply chain for the industrial products so they do not have much demand left so that they can fulfill the imports from the developing world so the problem of demand continue to persist for the developing world so they continue to search for the market for example agar aap india ko dekhoge india continue to search for market in the europe so we all you know we all trying to diversify our market so that we can search for the market in the middle east in the russian side in the south africa in the and the africa or in the in the southeast asia but largely you know our efforts are in vain so this demand demand problem is continue to persist in most of the developing countries with regard to the industrial product agar dusri problem ki baat kare to capital ki halaki capital provide kara di jati hai for example the world bank and the many other development institutions adb etc they provide the capital but that capital world developing world largely busy you know largely keep busy on for example on food on health basic education okay the developing world continue to you know or finance these activities jab in activities se finance karne mein you know we can only invest after the food health education etc these basic needs are met so when these basic needs are met how the developing country they just think that how do we channelize the excess capital or how to find the excess capital to fund the the industrial growth so the capital is again a problem number 3 is the pollution see 21st century is you know, generally called the century of the environmentalism or an environmental paradigm so during this paradigm every country just promo every country says the most particularly the developed world western world they say just minimize the carbon dioxide emissions but the for many developing countries uh, for running the industrial growth and the particular the cheap industrial growth they need the cheap in uh, cheap energy sources and the cheap energy sources are just the polluting sources most polluting sources for example coal but the new technologies for example the green technologies they are very expensive so they need very huge amount of the financing that is not available with the developing world so again this becomes a vicious circle for the developing world to tackle the problem or to go other side just keep on you no know, polluting but have the domestic industrial growth so this again pollution this again become a big challenge this trade off become a big challenge for the developing world problem number 4 is the skilling all the pop- large population is available in the developing world which can be utilized as the demographic dividend but skilling is a big problem so the large population is remains unemployed or they are underemployed because of the skilling right so this is another problem for the developing world this that needs to be tackled number 5 is the is the governance see see if a developing world is democratic for example india there is a large problem of red tapeism okay files are not passed okay these these problems another bottlenecks with regard to the departmental clearances they continue to persist so this again become the challenge for the industrialization number 6 is the infrastructure infrastructure is under developed in the developing world for example if you see the rail road port waterways they are the most under developed in the developing world and because of this and this infrastructure is the main propelling factor for the industrialization to occur right and because of this lack of the indus- this lack of these industrial infrastructures the industrialization could not pick up in the developing world so this is the sixth problem problem number 7 with the developing world industrialization is the you no know, labor unions labor unions have become very strong in many part of the developing world particularly where the left wing governments are there for example in mumbai earlier what happened because of the earlier government and the coalition party governments the labor wings labor unions have become very strong and which ultimately led to the delocalization of the core and textile industries and they moved to the other parts for example kanpur ahmedabad chennai devangri region of the karnataka so these are the main problems which are uh, no associated with the industrialization of developing world or are keeping the developing world less industrialized so these problems need to be tackled if the develop, developing world need you know wants its fast industrial growth so this was the main this was the topic of the industrialization right so we discussed about the industrial first of all what the industrial policy india followed after independence right okay what were the industrial regions and then collective problems what i said what are the collective problems of the developing world that they are not able to industrialize that we saw now what i what we have discussed 
in industrial topic we discuss the all kind of industries okay then we discuss the agro based industries we discussed the general pattern of industrialization in india complexes as well as the scz then we discussed the five industrial regions of india right so and finally the problem associated with the developing world and on the basis of these problems new industrial resolution can be formed very easily okay so this was the lecture number 18 basically and we have finished the industrial topic industries of india so industries we have finished right and in the next class what we will start is we will start with the topic of population okay after population we will do the settlement and after settlement we will do the culture of india so these topics are the next three topics in line that we will finish okay so we will meet in the next class so this was so in the lecture number 19 we will meet so thank you and one request please subscribe the channel before closing so thank you